In this lesson, you will learn how to fill in a two-way table. In one context, you will be given some information about a survey and asked to fill in the table. In another context, you will be provided with a Venn diagram, and then you will use the information provided in the diagram to fill in the two-way table. Now let's talk about two-way tables. A two-way table displays the data that applies to two different categories. And in a two-way table, one category is represented in the rows, and the other category is represented in the columns. Here I've included a little drawing of an example of a two-way table. So here you have the category of whether or not you're a boy or a girl. And here is the other category, and this is movie genre. So do you like horror or action? So as you can see, the category of movie genre is represented in the rows, and the category of gender is represented in the columns. Now let's try a word problem together. A group of 50 people were asked if they had ever been scuba diving or skydiving. The data showed that 17 people had been skydiving, 23 people had been scuba diving, and 13 people had done neither. So we want to begin filling in the two-way table that's below. And let's go ahead and use some of this information. So I want to highlight a couple things. We need to know the total number of people. So here we see a group of 50 people were surveyed. So that tells us this is the sample or the size of the sample group. Okay, so we're dealing with 50 people in all. And the data showed that 17 people had been skydiving. Let's use a different color now. 23 had been scuba diving and 13 had done neither. And what I'm going to do is put these numbers into the table accordingly. So let's begin with seven people, 17 people had been skydiving. So we need to go to the category for skydiving. So here it is, has been skydiving. Now we know 17 people have done this. So that means the total number of people that have been skydiving is 17. So we put that in the total column. Now we see next that 23 people had been scuba diving. So let's go to the category for scuba diving. It's right here in this first ca uh, column has been scuba diving, 23 people, that's the total. Lastly, we see here that 13 people had done neither. So doing neither, let's try and figure out, doing neither means they have not been skydiving and they have not been scuba diving. So we need to find the, the exact area in the table that represents both of these conditions. So here's the column for has not been scuba diving, right here, okay, so we're dealing with this column. And we also need to find has not been skydiving, which is right here. Where these two rows and columns align right here, right? This is where we would put that number. So 13 goes here because this cell represents has not been scuba diving above, see, and has not been skydiving. So now we can begin to fill in the rest of the table. We know that 50 people were surveyed in all which means the total columns here on the bottom and the right hand column, right, right hand total column and the bottom row need to be 50, right? They need to add up to 50 because that's the total. So if you want to find how many people have not been scuba diving, right, which would be this, this row right here, you need to subtract. So you have the total number of people surveyed, which is 50, minus 23. And the difference here is 27, which means that 27 have not been scuba diving. So if you have 23 plus 27, you get a total of 50, and that's what we're looking for. Now, next thing we can do is look at this column right here. So if we want to know how many people have not been scuba diving but have been skydiving, which would be this value right here, you would take 27 minus 13, which equals 14. So this means that 14 people have not been scuba diving, but they have been skydiving. Now let's take a look at here, this, this cell. This represents has been scuba diving, has been skydiving. So this represents the number of people who have done both. Now to find this, you would have the total here of 17 people who've been skydiving, and you're gonna subtract away the 14 that have not been scuba diving. So you have 17 minus 14 equals three. So that means the value here is three. And now we can look at this column all together. So let's find the number of people who have not been skydiving but have been scuba diving. Now that would be 23 is the total number of people who have been scuba diving. And let's subtract away the number of people that have been skydiving. So 23 minus 3 equals 20. So that means 20 people have not been skydiving but they have been scuba diving. 
And lastly, we have this area right here, which we're going to fill in by adding. So this represents, this value here, represents the total number of people that have not been skydiving. So you have 20 plus 13 equals 33. And as you see here, 33 plus 17 also equals 50. So we know this value is right. So when you go to fill in a table like this, start by understanding what each cell in the table represents. So that means what each of these little boxes represents. And you have to consider the category. And then you want to work with the information you're given and then use either subtraction or addition to fill in the rest of the table. Let's try another problem together. A survey was conducted on a group of 8th graders to see if they liked art, music, both, or neither. The Venn diagram shows the results. First, let's talk about the Venn diagram, which is over here on the right. And I want to talk about what each section represents. So this part here, the yellow section, as it's labeled, says art. What this means is that the number inside here represents the number of students who like art only. Then let's go over here to the green section. When you have green in this diagram, this is labeled as music. And this represents the number of students that like music only. The area in the middle where these two circles overlap here is blue. And you see the number 31. This area represents the number of students who like both art and music. And lastly, there's one area. Take a look at this orange area out behind these circles. And you see the number 3 up here. What that means is that three students do not like either, sorry, do not like art, nor do they like music. So let's begin by taking this information. And the first thing I want to do is find out the total number of people surveyed. As you saw in the first problem, that was an important value. So you need to know the total number of people surveyed. Now to do this with the Venn diagram is you go to each area and you find the number in each area and you want to add them up. So that means you're going to add 3 plus 10 plus 31 plus 12. And this is going to be the total number of people surveyed. The sum here is 56. So 56 eighth graders were surveyed. Now I can put 56 down here in the total column because this bottom corner represents the total in all. Uh, and then what we're going to do is work backwards from there using the Venn diagram to fill everything in. So let's begin with this 3 up here. 3 means since it's outside of all the circles, this represents the number of people who liked neither art nor music. So we need to go to the area does not like music, does not like art. So does not like music is in this row right here. Does not like art is in this column right here. Where they overlap is in this cell. So this is where you fill in the number three. Three do not like art and do not like music. Next, let's take a look at art. It says 10 students like art. Now this is, again, 10 students like art only. Okay, this is not the overlap. These students like art only. So this represents they like art but do not like music. Okay, so likes art is right here. Now let's go to the area where it says do not like music. Here's does not like music. So this area in the table represents likes art, does not like music. So what we would do is put the number 10 here. So now we can find the total number of students that do not like music, right? That would be the sum of these two columns. So you have 10 plus 3 is a total of 13 who do not like music. Now we can go over here to the green area. Let's see, there are 12 students that like music only. So we need to find the category for likes music, which is right here, but does not like art, which is right here. So we're looking to fill in this area of the table. 12 students like music but do not like art. So now we can find the total number of students that do not like art, which is the total of these two numbers in this column. 12 plus 3 is 15, so that's what goes down there. Now let's take a look at what else we can fill in. Well, we see a total here of 56, so we can fill in the area right here because 56 represents the total of everyone. So this represents likes music and does not like music. So likes music and does not like music. If we want to fill in the number of people in all who like music, we would subtract 56 minus 13 equals 43. So that's what we put right here. 43 people like music, 13 people do not like music, and 56 people in all were surveyed. We do the same thing to find the total number of people who um, like art, right? That would go right here. 
we're going to take 56 minus 15 in this case. 56 minus 15 equals 41. So 41 students like art. And lastly, we have this one cell to fill in. So you have 41 minus 10 will tell you the number of students who like art and like music, right? So that's what this column and row intersect at. Likes art, likes music. 41 minus 10 is 31. Now notice here, I told you that the blue area represents the students who like both art and music. You see 31 in the Venn diagram, and that's the same number we just calculated. And this area of the column and row represents likes music and likes art. So we did it correctly. In this lesson, you've learned how to interpret and fill in two-way tables. Now, you've learned how to do it from numbers alone, and you've also learned how to interpret a Venn diagram to fill out one of these tables. I hope this makes solving certain problems a little easier for you. Thanks for watching.